Yoko Allegro, piece number three, book six. This is a really popular encore piece. You can find a lot of great performances of it with a quick YouTube search. The tempo is usually a little bit extreme, so just take that under advisement. The tempo on our reference recording is also very fast, so we all played at a more moderate tempo today. I think it's a great idea to start by looking at the key signature and the time signature. You've got one sharp, it's in G major, time signature is 4-4 four, four, common time. Maybe do a little review of a G major scale. Uh, the Shradek in G major is good. G major arpeggio. Anything by Bach in G major because that will deal with a lot of the string crossings that you need. And of course the mordants over on page 2 were introduced back in book 3 in the Bach mini way. So not a bad idea to play that and refresh yourself with the idea of how a mordant fits into the phrase, which note it leans towards in the slur, and which part of the ornament we want to hear first, whether we should be aiming for the top note first or the second note first. Um, do your research. We have some interesting levels with our dynamics. I can see forte, piano, mezzo forte, piano, forte, piano, crescendos, lots of light switch kind of dynamics where you have sudden changes and the same type of crescendos that correlate to pitch that we learnt back in book two in the Handel Bore. So again, you already know 90% of this piece. It's just the mordants in fast sequence that maybe haven't been done before and the little gnarly bit over on page two. So I'm going to suggest that we actually work from the back end of the piece because the first page is not terribly challenging. Oh, another thing I should mention, slurs across the bar line, you'll see them down in bar 25, 26, 27. They have a very similar feeling to Bach double where we've got that hold and push forwards into the next bar. So you have momentum that's carrying you forwards. So, first pitch for 100 times practice or 1000 times practice if you're feeling really keen. I'd say start at bar 43 on the E where the poco poco diminuendo is beginning. Ya da 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 dun 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 fa da 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 dun 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 And you can hear this is just a really fancy scale. So let's play it. I've lost my violin. Hold on. Let's play it at a moderate kind of walking tempo. Ba da 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 dum and we're not worrying too much about the dynamics but thinking about them just because it will affect out the amount of bow we use and the weight of our bow so they don't have to be great in detail now but it's worth looking at that and budgeting ahead one and two and chunk to practice. Something I should maybe touch on is the two with the dash and the one with the dash. We're holding the second finger on, then we're holding the first finger on, then we're holding the third finger on when we shift into third position, and then over in the next bar we're holding the fourth finger on. And that really helps your dexterity, but it also depends on having a nice frame in your hand. If you've had your fingers a bit collapsed, now is the time that you're gonna get really badly caught up. So make sure your fingers are on their tips and they're falling onto the string in a relaxed motion. Again from the E, ready, play. semiquavers. Just be aware of your bow weight that you don't sink. Otherwise we get this he weird heaviness. 
which distorts the rhythm. Taka, 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 taka. You want an accent on the first note of each group, but you don't want a heaviness on the fourth semiphrase. So if you want to pause this now and play that E section a few times, go for your life. Let's take it back a chunk from the upbeat to bar 40. Yan da 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 ba 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 ya da 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 da. You can try this without the slurs if they look like they might give you grief. Not a bad idea. Um, we have a crescendo through the phrase and we have a few awkward string crossings. So playing your perpetual motion or a the other way really helpful for the dexterity of your bow crossings here. From the four, two, three, four, ready, one and two. It's the upbeat to bar 42 and this make sure you tuck the second finger right in behind the third finger then the third finger reaches out for D sharp fourth finger for D sharp okay so let's play that chunk again from the upbeat to bar 40 Yan da da dum one two three and this is a good time to stop and practice that little chunk so go ahead and do that. Okay, back we go another chunk, ready for our mordant section. I think it's good to stop and play your... You can play it in twinkle if you want. Mm, muck around with it. It's always good to have that extra articulation in your left hand. Then to practice it slurred. And make sure you're consistent about hearing the C first and then the D and then the C. We don't want to practice because that's a grace note, not a mordant. Really important you get. If you want to pause and practice that, go for your life. Okay, let's move on to this idea of quite a lot. You probably want to be good at it. Next phrase is the oh, different notes. Different fingers, sorry. So we've got a second to third finger modern and a first to second finger modern. Let's try from the B up bow. again just think to yourself should the mordant be accented mm, probably not looking at its position in the bar so we have the challenge of articulating the mordant clearly without unintentionally accenting it and distorting the rhythm from the B up bow in the middle of bar 36 one and two <laughs> spot to stop and practice that if that's what you need to do. Okay, bigger chunk to tackle. Heading further up the page to where we have subito piano poco 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 a poco crescendo. Suddenly piano and then moving forwards into that crescendo. This is the middle of bar 29 and we're starting on G. 
and we want to make sure our tone is clear and not uh, fluffy or blurred but nicely articulated. I think it's a good idea to work through these phrases marking in the tones and semitones between the ones and twos and threes just so you know where your fingers are supposed to go and this is the type of practice that I would do on it. First four, phrase, first eight notes. Great, do it again. Hmm, check my bow is balanced on the G. Check my right arm is at a good level. Oh yeah, that's a little bit clearer. If you're playing on the side of the street, really close to D, you'll get a fuzzy sound. Same if you're hanging off the back of your violin. Not, not centered. So you need to make sure you're playing towards the center of the string and that your bow is working towards the center of the violin playing towards the back. Okay, when you feel comfortable with that, take yourself into third position, find your C and get your fingers running tones apart. That's often a little dicey, but the ringing E should help you out a lot. D too, especially if your fingers are not touching the D string. If you've been a little bit sloppy and your frames collapsed, you'll kill the sympathetic resonance. On the C. If you want to pause and practice this 10 times, go for it. Next phrase, we move back a semitone to a high second position and we've got F sharp, A, Sorry, my F sharp was bodgy, but I was listening really hard for the ringing G and the ringing A. Because that sympathetic resonance will make or break your phrase. Do you want to stop and practice that? Go for your life. Next phrase, come to first position and the A string. Check your bow is centered on the string well, but you're not too close to the E and you're not too close to the D, but you're balanced in between. And you'll need to watch out for the C natural. We want the third finger to ring, of course. If you want to practice that, go for it. Make your C tuck in really well towards the B. Next phrase, D string. F sharp, so I need a semitone between my second and third finger. That means the frame of my hand changes. I've gone from one tight tone to one tone semitone. Ready, play. You should get resonance from the E first finger and the G third finger. Make sure your fingers aren't touching any other strings. Oh uh, yeah, resonance. If you want to stop and practice it, please do. Come to the A string, C natural. Make sure your B and C are touching well. You'll get a little sympathetic resonance from the B if you leave your E string free and clear. That nifty little perfect fourth that we love to not talk about. Coming to third position, this one is tricky. Your fingers have to be... The most common error is... bit crappy. Make sure you've got good tones and a good F sharp. Because we're in G major and F sharp is our leading note. Let me have. And make sure you can hear the one and two ring because they're your D and E. Maybe stop and practice it. Let's do our little split scale run that happens in bar 33. Yum, bum, 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 bum. This feels a lot like Vivaldi to me, especially this kind of that we do back in the A minor. You might know, you might have a completely different idea. Excellent.
Okay, let's place in the split scale again at 33. I keep your bows quite short because of all the string crossing. Ready, and... And now you have arrived at your Mordant's favourite bit. Great, play on from there to the end. Let's take the next chunk. It's going to require us to start on the last bar of the first page. Ya da 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 ba 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 And these are those leading um, notes slurred across the bar line. So we don't want the bow to heave ho too hard, but we'd like to make it obvious that we're playing across the bar line into the start of the next bar. One and two. One and two. tricky tones and semitones passage. Let's play again from the bar preceding the second page. One and two. One and two. One and two. keep working back through the piece in those chunks. I don't think it's really necessary um, to, to spoon feed to that extent. I like marking this into its phrases so you can probably see here in the pencil strokes that divide the phrases. So if something is amiss I don't need to practice the whole page 47 times. I can do three bars 47 times and that's actually realistic and attainable. It's not an efficient use of your time to practice the whole thing infinitely. Um, make sure you know the structure of the piece and anticipate that when you hit the end of the second page, you will in fact repeat back to the beginning and that when you get to the amazing tip over point that says to coda, you will then skip over and play the coda. Okay. So let's have a, we'll say a temperate, Temperate playthrough that doesn't require CD speed dexterity, but gives you a sense of phrasing and pulling the whole thing together. One, two, three, and.
Enjoy.